Hi, welcome back guys to uh, Driven by Christ Auto. We're out here, the next day has come by. Just a little recap. Uh, last time we had a customer's vehicle that come in. It was the Mitsubishi uh, Eclipse with a blown turbo motor. You know, guy was about ready to throw in the towel on the car. So, you know, Jesus is going to help us get this car fixed. But before we start, our day at work let's go over our word from our god all right so i offer you the sac the sacrifice of thanksgiving i don't want to take any of your good gifts for granted not even the rising of the sun thankfulness does not come naturally to me but you've been training me to respond supernaturally your word teaches me how important it is to have grateful to have a grateful attitude before the serpent tempted Eve in the garden. Uh, thankfulness was a natural response, but the evil one's temptation pointed her to the one thing that was forbidden. Though the garden w was full of delicious fruit that were freely available. Eve focused on the one fruit that was off limits. This negative focus darkened her mind, and she was tricked into temptation. When we focus on things that we want but can't have, or on situations that, that displease us, our mind also becomes darkened we take for granted life salvation sunshine loved ones and countless other gifts we look for what is wrong and refuse to enjoy life until the situation is fixed but when we approach you with thanksgiving the light of your presence pours onto us transforming us in the depths of being our depths of my in the hold on wait a minute guys i'm reading over my notes i can't see it very well uh the light of your presence pours onto me or pours onto us transforming us help me walk or help us walk in the light with you lord delighting in you and practicing the discipline of thanksgiving so uh it's good to be thankful for even waking up every day i'm thankful for everything that i have in my life i have wonderful children i have a loving wife uh you know i may not have a huge house in real life but i got everything that i would ever want in this house so can't ask for any more so we want to go ahead and and uh, thank God and Jesus for everything that we got. So, and uh, we ask the Lord to bless us in our day at work. And let's go ahead and get this customer's car fixed. Because I know he is ready to get it back. So, we'll go ahead, get the shop unlocked, get inside. We'll go ahead and start turning on everything that we may need to use today. Computer. We'll check our voicemail, but let's uh, kind of recap on everything. So right now, this car does not have an engine into it. So we're, we were currently building it, and we got some parts waiting for us uh, uh, at the door from O'Reilly. So we're going to have to go out there and go pick them up and bring them in. Or I guess Jamie will grab them and bring them in, which is, you know, Jamie's my wife. So she's hanging out in the office. She deals with all of our... Uh, paperwork she's the accountant for driven by Christ Auto uh, anyway so we left off on this engine we got to continue building this motor so let's go ahead and jump into it uh, that's right we'll do the ignition last let's go ahead and get our timing components and get this engine up to top dead center now, in real life, you're going to have a mark on this cam gear that will mark somewhere on the back of this valve or this uh, 
timing belt cover that's on this head and you line these marks up there will be a mark on this crankshaft that lines up with a mark on the block that lets you know where TDC is. Like I said, guys, one tooth on an interference motor, it will bend valves, and you don't want to have to pull an engine out over valves. So, uh, especially with this race head that we are not with a race or with a race head, it can cost you a lot of money. So let's get these uh, idler pulleys on. Let's get this water pump on here. Uh, real life, this water pump uh, will have a rubber seal and everything's got torque spec, guys. So if you're building a real engine, you want all the information on it. Uh, we can reuse this timing belt. It's still a good timing belt. I think the tensioner was good too. So we're going to run with it. Um, we did fix the timing belt cover. Sorry guys, I had to get something to drink. My throat is just killing me. But uh, anyways, we fixed the timing belt cover. We put a new seal, rubber seal around it to keep trash from getting in here on our timing belt. So let's go ahead and get it back on. And we'll put our uh, crankshaft pulley or harmonic balancer back on now this thing's got to be torqued down it's like a, a lot of foot pounds of torque on that we was able to rebuild the alternator so a hey, customer's going to be happy 100 percent alternator so this thing's like brand new out of the box <clears throat> same thing for the power steering pump we replaced all the seals in it uh, I don't know if this belt was any good. Yeah, we can reuse that belt. We can re... Uh, we're going to put him a new roller on here. So, alright. And then we got a oil filter. that uh, We ain't going to reuse that oil filter. Let's go ahead and uh, tag it in our parts uh, menu on our tablet. And let's hit our rallies up already this morning. So, I'm going to let them know we need an oil filter. So, we'll go ahead and put in the order for that. Alright, so while we're waiting on that oil filter, that's the last thing we got to put on this engine before we put it in. So, let's get back over here and uh, check everything out on the car. I think we put everything back onto here. No, we didn't. So, our sway bar come in yesterday afternoon. Uh, before we left the shop, so let's go ahead and get it in there. Uh, zoom in on the Zen link. The end links were still good, so all right, let's go to the other side and go ahead and put the end link on that. All right. Uh, I think we're I think we're done back here. Let's look at this fuel pump. All right, fuel pump looks good. We can go ahead and throw the tires back on here and torque them down. Now, guys, check your tire sizes. Uh, sometimes on different vehicles, they may be different tires than what's up front. Normally, the wider tire goes in the back, which is the first number. Like this tire is a. 215-45-R18, so the first set of numbers is the width of the tire. The second set of numbers, which is 45, which is the profile of the tire, how uh, how tall the tire is. Um, and then, of course, the R18 st stands for rim size, which is an 18-inch rim. So it's all the same, so we can just put them on there. Alright, let's go to the other side. Let's uh, go ahead and put it on. Alright. Alright, uh, let's, we ain't gonna be able to put the front tires on yet, because we still got axles and lower control arms to put on, but, uh, we're gonna go ahead and lower the engine down, and, uh, get ready to...
put this engine in. All right, so I just heard him come through the door. Jamie just put the parts for us out here in the back. So we got our oil filter. Let's get over here and put our oil filter on our motor. All right, yeah, 100%. And guys, don't worry about that other oil filter. Uh, we will have you. So we would go over here, grab our motor hoist, roll it into here. In real life, we would take this engine off. And uh, we would roll it back over here in front of the car. And then we would go ahead and get ready to drop this engine in. All right, so... Alright, so we got the engine inside the car now. We can go ahead and move this thing back over there in the corner. Wow. Okay. So. Uh, oh yeah, we was waiting for our timing chain parts too. So let's uh, get them on there. See all this stuff we can do in the car. So. Alright, we'll go ahead and put this timing chain on. Put our other uh, cam gear on the back which is part of the uh, variable va uh, uh, cam I explained in the other video this is electronic device that allows you to get low end torque and high end power as the RPM goes through the range that's what this does so and then of course we gotta put our spark plugs in and our ignition coils we're putting them premium plugs in there Customer is going to be happy about that. We're not putting, you know, boo boo spark plugs in there or what I say, Mickey Mouse spark plugs. Uh, hold on, let me get this camera to do right. All right, here we go. All right, and we'll go ahead and put our coil packs on and get them plugged into the engine harness. These coil packs would connect to the wiring harness on the motor. So, which is, it doesn't show it in the game, but, you know, it's it's actually there in real life. So, uh, alright, so I think we got all of that. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the car up in the air and start getting uh, driveline stuff ready. Alright, so, we know we got to put a new flywheel on this, uh, on this motor. So... And I think we had one in stocks already, but uh, if you want to go to your parts menu, this is where you can to buy it. Um, so let's go ahead and get this flywheel on and get it torqued down. Now, the clutch was absolutely destroyed. I don't know if we was able to. Nope, wasn't able to rebuild the clutch. So we got to get a we got to get a clutch kit. So let's go to the. Uh, our parts menu and we're gonna we're gonna get this guy a good clutch we're gonna get him since he is running a turbocharged motor he is running a performance car I think he does race this car so we're gonna give him a good clutch something that is not going to break and a good pressure plate too and uh, you have to get the throw out bearings or the release bearings into here so we'll go over to our transmission. Yeah, clutch release bearing. Get him a brand new one of them too. We don't want to, you know, put old parts back on his vehicle. So this clutch is guaranteed not to slip, even up underneath abuse. That reminds me, in real life, we just got finished, uh swapping a, a stage four pro light uh flywheel and clutch set on my little honda civic that's got the b18 type r into it and boy you want to talk about a clutch that's grabby and you got to be careful whenever you're coming off the clutch it'll if you got bad motor mounts you're going to know about it so his clutch release bearing was still good but guys whenever you got this stuff tore down uh you know, if y'all want to use the old one in the game, you can. But I'm trying to play this game as realistic as what you would do in real life. Whenever you got this stuff tore down, you want to make sure you replace it with new hardware. Because it would be a shame you done, you got to pull a whole transmission off just to replace a release bearing. 
a clutch release bearing. So, good thing to do. So, we go ahead, we pull our transmission that we uh, serviced out and get it up on the transmission jack, get it raised up, get it put on the car. We got new hardware, new bolts, and uh, on these transmissions in real life, they're going to have got our dowel pins, which are kind of like guides that help you uh, align the transmit. Oh, another thing, before I even do that, let me get out of this. All right, so whenever you're putting this pressure plate on for this clutch, that's what they call a clutch alignment tool. It's like a little... Let me go ahead and remove it. That way I can sh show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so, this clutch is just floating there freely. The only thing that holds it in the place is the pressure plate. And on the inside of the transmission, there is a shaft that goes into here. Well, they give you in a clutch kit a little simulation shaft that aligns the clutch that way whenever you tighten down this pressure plate it holds the clutch in in the exact perfect alignment that way whenever you get up here and you go to slide this transmission on it slides right through the center of the clutch if you do not get this part right and it's out of alignment you are not fixing to get that transmission on that motor so just remember that in real life if you're actually doing this. Oh, no, we don't want to take it off. So let's put our throwout bearing back on there. Get our transmission put back up here. And we'll run these new, new hardware bolts down. All right, so we got that on there. The next thing that we would do is we would go ahead and put our intermediate shaft, which they call a front drive shaft in the game. There's normally bolts or a bearing that goes right here on the block that you would bolt this thing down. And obviously that is destroyed, so I forgot to order this part. So let's tag it, get into our menu, and... Uh, Let's make sure we bring up all parts whenever we do this. Um, go ahead and order this for Mo Rallies. Alright, got the order in. So that part will be here here in a little bit. So let's, uh, let's, um, we can go ahead. I think it'll let us put the drive shaft in on this side. Uh, no, but that's alright. We'll go ahead and put this exhaust back on while we're waiting on those parts to get here. So, real life, you're going to have a gasket here and a gasket here. You know, some bolts to hold it into place. And uh, let's get it up there. So, this pipe was in fairly good condition, which is the down pipe from the turbo that hooks to the exhaust. All right, so we got that thing on there. Uh, we'll, we'll let the... We'll let the uh, engine down and we'll go ahead and add fluids they're on the way with the part so my just got a text message saying your part is on the way all right so let's add fluid into the power steering reservoir and right there Remember, this is an optical illusion in this game, guys. Pay attention to it. That thing may not be all the way full. Go ahead and add coolant. And since this is a new motor or a freshly built engine, you want to fill this thing as close to the top as you can. That way, any air, po whoop, any air pockets that come out of this motor will come into this reservoir and it'll pull coolant back into the motor. And I don't know why we drained the windshield wash reservoir, but that was my bad. So, hey, customer gets new windshield wash fluid. One more thing to be happy about. We'll go ahead and fill it all the way up, too. All right. So, we got all that in there. And the final and really important part, engine oil. You go to start this thing up with a new engine and no oil into it, it ain't going to be good. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Let's check the dipstick and make sure we are at the 
correct level. Now, this thing's kind of hidden on these four cylinders, guys. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, that's good enough. As long as it's pretty close to max, you're good. It's in. It's within operating level. All right. So we got that in there. All right. So the parts guy just dropped off our uh, our intermediate shaft for our motor. Let's uh, pull this battery out. We're gonna do a uh, 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 give him a charge on his uh, battery customer satisfaction guys if you got the ability to do stuff for your customers do it they will come back all right so let's get it up in there man my throat's drying out mm. all right so um we got our half shaft let's get it up in here and uh Go ahead and wow, sorry about that, guys. I'll be hitting the wrong buttons all the time. Let's get zoomed in on this part. All right, we're gonna put in this intermediate shaft, brand new. All right, so we got it in there. There would usually would be some bolts back here that hold it in, but that they don't have it on the game. But it, that's cool. I'm gonna let you know about it. Uh, all right. So we're going to go ahead and stab our drive shaft. What you can do is you can grab the bottom of this uh, rotor. Don't grab the brake shield and lift out that way so you can get the drive shaft knuckle to go through here. Always grab it from the rotor or from the, from the caliper and just pull it outwards. So we're going to go ahead and put this drive shaft in. And it's good. Right here, where this bolt is going in at, where this, where the shaft, uh, where they stab into the transmission and the motor, it's good to put some uh, uh, lube on that, like some assembly lube. It'll keep this uh, uh, drive shaft from getting stuck in your wheel bearing, because those can be a fight to get out too. Um, no, we are not ready for the tire because we got to put our lower control arm on. And we was able to rebuild that uh, control arm and get a new uh, boot for the ball joint and put some new grease into it. So customers going to be happy about that. They should have some really tight suspension work done. Alright. Let's move to the other side. Um, we'll go ahead and get this drive shaft in yeah see at the ends of each of the drive shaft it looks like it's got them splines or like teeth that's what you would put on there now sometimes these little boogers right here can become a fight they got this snap ring that goes at the end of them and sometimes they require this tool that's got a fork that goes back behind the CV joint and it's got a slide hammer. In fact, I can actually show you where one is in this shop. You can also use it to remove bearings. But basically, you, this little fork in hooks to the drive shaft. And this is a weight. And whenever you slam it up against the end, it causes it to pop that drive shaft out. But you don't need that for assembly. Just taking it out. I saw that. Uh, whenever I was playing the game, I was going to add that to one of my videos. But anyways, go ahead, put some lube on this thing, and put it in there. Let's get the control arm in. Alright, and we are ready to put the tires on. Remember to torque these wheels down to the uh, factory specs. Uh, normally on... On front tires, they're anywhere from, you know, 40 to 50 foot pounds of torque. So that's what I go for. Alright, we got that on there. Alright, and go ahead and double check everything. Make sure that, uh, that we didn't forget nothing, which our test pass will identify if we did forget something. So. Let's go ahead and get it down. Alright, so since this is a brand new engine, these computers in the car, this thing right here, 
uh, records what's going on inside the engine. Now, this computer, the last time it was on here, it was recording this engine was destroyed. So, it's done changed all its parameters, but whenever we unplug this battery it's going to reset that computer back in the default mode where everything is factory so it may require some tuning since we did put uh, forged pistons which are they are a little bit higher compression of a piston so it is going to require some tuning you would have to do that in real life if you bump up the compression on the motor you're going to have to mess with the ignition and timing uh, but on the game you can just drop this engine in and keep going so uh, let's go ahead and grab this battery all right all right getting the engine bay i'm gonna put it look at this 100 percent battery like he just bought that thing from the store customer happy <laughs> That's what we're going for, guys. That's what Jesus would want us to do in our work every day. If you work, you act like you're working for Jesus. You do everything to please him, and I can guarantee you, you will not go wrong in your life. All right, so let's go ahead and bolt the hood back on. We had to take it off to make the, the engine pull a little bit easier. All right, so... In real life, we would go ahead and, uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, car rack's not working. Huh, that's weird. I ain't never had it do that before. Let's try to go up. Check everything. I don't know what could be missing. Yeah, that's everything's up there. I don't something's wrong with my car rack, I guess. I ain't letting the car down for some reason. Alright, there it goes. So we had a wow, that's the first time I ever had that happen. We're gonna have to check this rack. That means that uh our button ain't working right but anyways we got the car on the ground we're going to go get our forklift and we're going to pull it into the dyno shop and make sure that everything is going to be performing well with the engine uh actually you know what we can go ahead and uh we can do that over there on our test path so let's get it moved to the test path we ain't gonna crank it up in here so you don't want exhaust fumes filling up your shop and breathing it in so you see these big air things on the wall that lets it where you can take that blue pipe and you attach it to your muffler and it sucks the exhaust fumes out of here so we can crank this car up in here but let's go ahead and uh go ahead and do our visual inf inspection for the customer because he is gonna he said he wants a, a full inspection done and we, we do that with every customer at driven by Christ auto so and you want to do this in real life too guys do everything you can for your customer there we go see all this stuff we're doing we just leveled up that's what all that racket was in the background uh, if you're playing this game and you're trying to get XP, check everything that you can. Uh, we never did check that air filter. That probably wouldn't be a bad idea to check just to make sure. Uh, let's move back here and check the suspension. We know we done visually checked everything on the rack. We're just making it go through the list. This is how you get your XP anyways in the game. <clears throat> See, it's got them bushings. They're lit up green right now. It lets you know that they are new. Well, they kind of look yellow, but they're they're green. All right. So uh, everything checks out good. Do the magical spin, and our car's back to normal. Um, now we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna show y'all something. Y'all uh, y'all remember that 
that ugly compression test that we did before. So let's do a compression test again and let's see where we stand. Engine needs to be complete. Okay guys, so it is saying something is missing. And I don't know what could be missing. Oh, duh, you gotta have a starter on here. All right, so let's go ahead and put the starter back on. <laughs> I always forget that thing. Alright, so real life you're going to have some bolts and you're going to have some wires that attach to this thing. Be really careful. Do not over tighten the bolt to that wire on the starter or else you could break your, this little piece is really fragile right here where that wire attaches and it goes to your starting solenoid. Alright, so we got that into there. Hmm. Sorry, I'm still dealing with the throat stuff. Uh, we're going to go ahead and now we're going to do a compression test. It's a good thing to spin this engine over anyways without... Hold on, I'll let it go through. Look at all them 100%. Alright, so we got we got 100% motor, guys. I mean, this thing should perform like there ain't no tomorrow. So, uh, should perform just like if it was brand new in fact he may actually have a little bit more horsepower but uh let's go ahead and check his air filter you know while we got the car into here uh air filter is good about 75 percent so good enough to keep running all right there we go so let's go in here we're going to hook up, we'll run our wires from our computer over here and plug into the OBD2 port and make sure that the hardware for the ECM or the computer for the car is downloaded, a base map. We'll go over there and tune it later. So, alright, so let's see if we can hear this baby purr. Oh yeah, it fired right up. So, normally guys, you ain't going to be sitting here after a brand new, on a first engine startup, you want to sit there and let it idle until it gets up to operating temperature, but uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that it was going to crank up, but uh, uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and do the test path. Go, if you want out, go. One of my cats is having a fit to get out the door, boy. Alright. So, anyways. Alright, so how you use this test path, test path, is once you get on there, you give it the throttle. It's going to stop on its own. Then you hold the brake, which is your left trigger. Gas on it, which is the right trigger. Left trigger. It's testing the braking performance everything's good alright now it's gonna shake the car that's gonna test out your suspension suspension come back in the green so we know it's got a good suspension alright and there we go Alright, uh, and this is the report. So the computer is going to print out everything for the customer. This is all the stuff that he needs to know. And there's where we replaced all the rubber bushings. So this covers us too. You got to watch it, guys. Sometimes your customers are, are out to get mechanics too. They'll bring a car in and say, oh, well, you tore up something. Or you didn't do this. Or you didn't do that make sure if you got the equipment that will record this stuff you record it for your own safety uh, you know not everybody in the world's perfect you know some people are out there trying to get each other we ain't doing that so let's go ahead and give them give them an alignment which it's a good thing we checked because this guy's car is way out of alignment and that was probably probably because uh we undone the front control arm whenever we was putting the CV joints in. So, hey, 
free alignment. There you go. So we know this car is going to roll straight going down the road. Headlights are already aligned, so we don't need to mess with it if it ain't broke. Uh, all right, so here comes the fun part, guys. This is what everybody's probably waiting for. Let's go ahead and get this thing moved to the dyno shop. Alright, here we are. We're in the dyno shop. So, we got these big fans in here. So, yes, we can crank up a car. Uh, we also got the exhaust ventilation system uh, where it will, you know, pull any exhaust fumes out of here. Uh, uh, hold on. Somebody's trying to call me up. And that ain't happening right now. Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. We're going to, uh, I had to silence that phone. You know, while we're doing work on vehicles, unless it's my wife calling me, I don't answer no phone. But anyways, uh, so, all right, let's see what this, 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 uh, thing's going to do. We're going to keep the engine door open. That way we can keep an eye on everything and let's go ahead and get our dyno now if we were going to really tune this car in performance this is what you would do you see the ecm right here so you would plug that ecm up to this computer but it, it's going to say tune is only available for your own car so you can't tune customers vehicles unless they won't uh, you know tuning done to it and you will get some performance cars that will come in that are trying to get more power out of their vehicle but we're going to take this computer and we're going to make sure that the base map is uploaded with our new pistons that way it can accommodate uh, for fuel and timing uh, that's what you would have to do in real life let's see what this thing is going to do Alright, so factory horsepower was 270 horses. So let's see what it's going to do now. First gear, second gear, and third gear should be our pulling gear. Here we go. It's got a lot of torque. And here's the crossover. Wow. That thing got that thing has just as much horsepower or torque as it does horsepower. That's and look at there. He even gained one horsepower and one foot pound of torque. Oh, two horsepower and what one foot pound of torque. So this car is gonna be running better than what it was whenever this car was brand new. So after we tune it. You know we got to go out there and we got to test drive it. So these are on engine rebuilds. If you're not having to rebuild an engine and a customer's waiting for their vehicle, just go ahead and give it back to them. But he wants a full report done. So let's go ahead. We're going to crank our car up. Now we can kind of test it out and see what it sounds like. Ooh. You can hear that blow-off valve on the turbo. Eh, ain't really got a two-step. It's got a rev limiter on it, but oh well. All right, so let's get it down to the drag strip. It's a local drag strip down the road, so. Uh, they're always racing there. You can hear it from the shop. So, but anyways, uh, we're not going to actually race the customer's vehicle. We're just going to do a, a practice run. We're going to do a half mile race. So, we're going to make sure that that clutch transmission, because this customer does race this vehicle. So, we're going to make sure that it's race ready. Alright, so you get up here. You got to hold down X, which is going to be your handbrake and clutch. If you let off of X before the lights turn green, you're going to red light. So here we go. X and just hold it to the floor. Green. And you got to shift the gears with R1. All right. Is 
doing pretty good. Pretty fast little car. There you go. We hit, all right, so it ran a 13.7 at 102 and a quarter of a mile. And uh, we got it up to almost 130 miles per hour and, uh, and a half mile. It only took this car 2.9 seconds to hit 60 miles per hour. This thing is quick coming off the line. So, or maybe that's 60 foot. I may be saying that wrong because I don't, I think it took a little, I think, yeah, I think that's the 60 foot mark. It took 2.9 seconds. My bad. I'll have to take that back. I was supposed to say, I was like, wait a minute, this thing hit 60 miles per hour in 2.9 seconds. So, all right. Eighth of a mile was uh, 8.9 seconds. So, anyways, there's the report for the customer. He knows exactly what his car will do. He may have a better reaction time than I did, but anyways, he's got the report. So, we're going to go back to the garage. All right, so we uh, we don't need no more further tuning. Um, we're gonna go ahead and drive this car around front. Uh, all right, so now we got the car out here for the customer to pick up. Uh, you know, we can go ahead and give him a full report on his vehicle. This customer is gonna be extremely happy. So. You know, my wife's done called him up. He's on the way. So let's go ahead and check out the vehicle report, and which is going to be in car status. And we're going to make sure that we did not miss anything. We want to make sure that everything has a green check beside it. And it does. So this customer is ready to pick up his vehicle. And wow, look at there. He even gave us a bonus of 1600 We'll just, we ain't going to say them numbers because they're bad. That's just already just bad juju there. Anyway, so we made a, a $1,700 job bonus. He threw in an extra $1,700 for us taking care of him. Total payout for the job was $6,000 and $6,039. So he's happy. He came and picked up the vehicle and he's off to the house or wherever he's going all right guys so we got a little bit of time left today so we're going to get in here and we're going to continue working on our drag car all right well we got to go get the engine uh roll our engine into here and uh get our engine off uh and oh look at there we even got awarded uh, a case uh let's go ahead and do that we call them the the case of blessings. So, and uh, let's let's do it. So we're gonna go ahead and see what type of reward we got. Yes, I wanna open up the case. All right. So remember, you got you got uh, five cards. Now y'all ain't gonna be able to hear my wife, but she's actually in the background. So, uh, Jamie, pick a number between one through five. All right. She picked three. Let's see what we got. Well, we got an extra $1,462. All right, guys. So in here, what we're really praying for, hey, put in a prayer for your box before you open it on your game. And uh, see if you can't, uh, you know, pray for uh, another box or you really want them scrap pieces. I'm telling you, you want the scrap pieces. <laughs> so let's, uh, all right, Jamie. What what we got after one? She said one. Uh, all we got was XP. So we don't. That just gives us a better business rating. So we're a level 38 business right now. So that that just helped us out a little bit more on that. So everything's a blessing. But I didn't do it in the other episode. Whenever we did the other car, we actually had another box to open. So I'm gonna pick the numbers on this. Alright, so, 
we're going to see if it see if we can't get some scrap parts in here all right we're going to open up the next box and it'll tell you down there uh on your bottom where it says pick and close it'll tell you how many boxes you got we just forgot to open up the box on that episode so we're going to do it on this one and i'm gonna say you know you can put it in a prayer dear heavenly father let us be lucky to get some scrap pieces but either way we are thankful for whatever we get out of these boxes in jesus name amen so let's see what we got we're going i'm gonna go with all the way right we're gonna go with number five all right we got two grand and we're gonna stay on a straight path in our life so we're gonna go in the middle and looky there what did we get scrap pieces exactly what we prayed for all right but remember guys everything that we pray for we're not we're not gonna always get so be thankful for what you do have there's a reason why he may not have wanted you to have that or whatever you were praying for so all right so we got some scrap pieces we're up to uh 1737 pieces of scrap so that's a, a upgraded supercharger right there but we're just going to build a, a full-blown drag motor we're not going to use any of our scrap pieces yet because i'm going to go over in the video on how to do that but let's go ahead and get into there and we're going to move our engine back onto our engine stand and we're going to continue working on it all right install engine all right so this is the engine for our driven by christ drag car our very first one so uh we're going to continue uh building it so let's see add part all right so we're going to get a supercharger intake i'm going to add that go to our performance menu a rally's performance menu and bring up our shopping list intake all right so basically this is a uh, lightweight strong alloy uh, the runners on this intake are a lot bigger and they are polished down to a mira finish which you're gonna see whenever we put it on here this thing's gonna be shiny son look at it you well if it hold on let me do it like this so you can actually see it you see how shiny it is in there it looks like a mirror so you know uh there's there's not going to be any re air restrictions at all for this so yeah you can see straight down the runners they're smooth so all right that's good that's what you want if you're ever wanting to upgrade the performance of your factory car you can pull the intake off of your car if it's not plastic the plastic ones are already smooth you can't you know get any smoother surface than you know plastic unless it's got like some uh you know like some factory plastic molds in there like where the where they're injecting it into the mold ah that's too much information but anyways you can do it to the metal ones you can polish out your uh, intake runners and make more performance so we're gonna need a supercharger back to the performance menu all right and this one is a uh, this supercharger is also made out of lightweight material it's got bigger uh, compression impellas and it's got a smaller gear meaning more boost and that's what we want more boost means more power so there yeah, look at that thing it's all shiny it's even got a performance boost controller in the back to be able to handle that boost uh, so whenever you're doing this to an engine whenever you're adding this much boost you have definitely got to upgrade your fuel system because a factory uh, fuel system won't deliver enough fuel uh, to the engine and it'll lean out up underneath boost and guess what uh, you'll be replacing pistons again so anyways uh, let's go ahead and get our uh, racing fuel injection rails this makes sure we're going to need two of them because you got a left and a right bank so order two all right and uh, this 
this is definitely going to deliver the amount of fuel that we need. Now, in order to get the most performance out of this engine, we, we, we're not going to be able to run a factory ECM. We're going to have to uh, run a performance one, a stage three. Uh, so we can tune this computer to get as much fuel in there as we can, or else we're going to have to turn our boost controller back. So I'm going to show you all that in the dyno room. All right, so we're definitely going to need a performance throttle body. That way, this one's a lot bigger. Uh, it allows for more air volume to go into the supercharger. And, of course, it is polished. So you can see how shiny it is. No air restriction. And I love that anodized red look to it. So... And actually, guys, I actually know how to anodize metal in real life now. Uh, all you need is some water, baking soda, a couple of pieces of copper wiring, and whatever piece you're trying to anodize. And what happens is this is an optical illusion with our eyes. This is not actually a color. It's uh what happens is, is whenever it goes through uh, electrolysis, uh, whenever the baking soda and the electricity go through water, it causes the metal to change. And whenever it reflects the light, it reflects the light in a different color. And that's basically what we're seeing in anodized parts. So different voltages make different colors check it out on youtube you'll see what i'm talking about look up how to anodize uh metals because i was going to do it with some of my silverware in the house just to you know to have a cool spoon <laughs> cool cereal bowl spoon i got to anodize performance red or maybe you like that pretty purple whatever but anyways we're going to keep going with this engine all right so we need a belt. I don't think we got one of these belts. So we're going to have to go to our regular parts menu. They do not offer a racing belt uh, for this. So we're going to hit up O'Reilly's. Uh, you know, they'll be bringing the part over. Uh, while we're waiting on that, uh, let's go over here to the car. And we're also going to order some uh, body panel pieces. So... Let's uh, bring up our parts menu again. Let's go to our body station. We're going to go to body tuning. So this is the car that we're working on. Uh, we're going to get, we're going to do the really good front bumper. It's an aerodynamic front bumper. Uh, cuts through the wind better. Same thing with the hood. Uh, I love the way that the lights look on these blacked out headlights. So we're going to go with them. Uh, we're going to go with the uh, rear bumper that has the air diffuser because air will, wind drag will slow down your vehicle. So the more aerodynamic a vehicle is, the faster it will go. <clears throat> and since we got blacked out headlights, we are going to go ahead and go with the blacked out tail light series. This thing's going to look good. Now, that only covered the bumper, the headlights, and the taillights. So, the rest of the car pieces you got to get in the body workstation. These are not aftermarket parts. These are the regular car parts. So, uh, I don't know what all we fix, but I do know that you can't fix windows. So, go through here and every one of these buy the new windows we want 100 percent new parts on this car because we're going to turn around and sell this to a customer after we see how well it does at the racetrack um i'm not really sure about the body panels so you know what we're just going to go ahead and order it anyways i'm going to go ahead and get that left door the fender the right door right fender uh, we don't need a hood. We don't need the headlight. We're going to need a side mirror. We don't need the rear bumper. Uh, we will need a trunk. We will need the right mirror. And I think we already got that uh, that other piece of glass. So 
Alright. So we got all of our body parts and I heard the door open so Mr. O'Reilly's has then dropped off our belt for our engine. So let's uh in fact um we're gonna look at the other stuff and see what else we need to order while we're dealing with the with the uh with the body stuff now we are going to put a racing fuel filter on here you got to have a high volume fuel filter for a race engine performance plugs all day and mr o'reilly's is fixing to be mad because he's fixing to be walking right back over here again with some racing ignition coils so got to have a good ignition coil with the amount of fuel that you're throwing into this cylinder you're going to need a really good spark to ignite it so uh, we're going to order some performance coals and that's the other part that we need we need the uh, covers so uh, let's see um, parts menu there we go back out uh, all right so it just let me know that you know we're we're almost done for this day of work at the shop we only got about four minutes left so i'm going to go ahead and put in the order for all these parts uh before i leave um you know the shop for the day we just got a belt we just got some ignition coals and some some head covers uh so the next time we get on here guys we're going to be ready to be dropping this motor in the car and we're going we're really going to be working our rallies tomorrow because we're going to have to order a lot of parts so what i'm going to do is put in the order for every part that we're going to need and we're going to uh try to get this drag car assembled tomorrow and after we get finished with our customer vehicle uh and uh hopefully we can get it out there at the track before the weekend so we only got two more days and then it's going to be the weekend so we got to get ready we got to hopefully we can do it but uh anyways guys um that's pretty much you know all we can cover in this so we're almost there we almost got our drag car built uh we, may, we can probably throw these body panels on real quick Go ahead and throw this fender on. Get a kind of get a look at what the car is gonna look like. We'll have to pull the hood back off of it. Yeah, if you accidentally take your cursor off of this vehicle, it will take you out of assembly mode. So if you wonder what happened there, that's what happened. Alright. Got like two minutes of trying to hurry up and get it in, guys, for it. Tells me I can't record no more. All right, right there. This thing's going to look good. All right, so one more door. Uh, we got a minute and 30 seconds. We're going to try to get it there before it runs me out of time. All right, so anyway, all right, front windshield. But anyway, so that's kind of what our car is going to look like. This thing's going to look good, so can't wait to get it built with y'all so uh hope y'all have enjoyed this hope y'all enjoyed the the episodes and the time that i am putting into this and uh you know we'll be back here again tomorrow at driven uh by christ auto so y'all have a blessed night and a blessed tomorrow god bless catch y'all later